Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, live Q&A in the Digital Offer Builders. Let me know if you can hear me and where you're watching from. So I will start by navigating towards pre-submitted questions. Uh, so you know where you can submit your question for the next time. But please also feel free to drop them live. I will answer as many as I can over the following hour. OK, so when you're in the Offer Builders, right, you, you have the pin post welcome. Please start here. And when you navigate down, you see that we have a post for Q&As. And this is where I will get the questions from and where I'll catch them from now. But obviously, if you're watching live, just drop the comment um, under this post or not this post, under this post or on YouTube. Uh, so I can also catch uh, the, your question live right now. Talking about this welcome post here, I recently shared with you a template. If you have your own community um, and you're looking for an onboarding post, right, which takes off a lot of pressure from new people when they just join, I recently shared this template here with you. So um, please make sure to grab it. It's with placeholders, pretty straightforward to understand. And then also with the example from our community. So just if you have a community free or paid, right, just make sure that you get that for sure. Hey, good morning. Oh, from London. That's so nice. I think you're just an hour ahead. Hi. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, so let me, while questions come in here, let me navigate to the first pre submitted question and also let people know when I'm answering. So I'm answering, answering around the five minute mark. Okay, so first question I have here is, I don't know what kind of membership model to choose. Offering too much life support, support sounds frightening to my ADHD brain. I think I would be fine with one to two live sessions a week, but not more. I want to build a main though, or maybe an online course with a payment plan. I'm lost. What do you think would work best? What do you think um, for my situation? Okay, so this question is about how much coaching support do we want to have in a membership, right? And a quick reminder, and the way I recommend building your paid communities or memberships um, is that we have a triangle of deliveries. One is content, the other one is coaching, and the third one is community, right? So in school, you see this uh, pretty well because the, uh, the platform is just so straightforward and amazing like that. We have the triangle finds itself in the following, right? So what you see here, is the community and actually this is an $8 membership we don't offer community support so it's really quote unquote just members helping members but because school is really amazing from its engagement system with the leaderboard and with actually notifying members um, the engagement here is super vivid and even higher than in our $7 um, community that we have on Facebook, the Coach Growth Hub, where we have over 6,000 members, right? So this is even more engaged. And I believe it's because of how school is just feeding out the information to people. So that's our community element. Now, our content element is in our classrooms, right? So here we have the Evergreen Core content. This is basically a walkthrough of the overall transformation that the offer builders offers, right? So people understand what am I supposed to do kind of overall and how am I supposed to move forward? And then within the other classrooms, we have resources to fill up the, the steps in the evergreen core content, right? So this is basically where we drop ongoingly content to facilitate that journey. So take off creative burden and implementational uh, hurdles alongside this core transformation that we offer. That's a content component. And now what this question was about is the life coaching component, right? So um, here the question is uh, how much, when I have content, when I have community, how much coaching do I need to offer? And you can offer coaching in various formats. Like what I do right now is a live Q&A. It's the lowest access type of, hi, hi. it's the lowest access type of coaching, quote unquote, consulting, mentoring, however you want to label it, right, that we can offer in a membership. Other formats would be, for example, and I'm, I'm doing lower access one, for example, hot seat coaching, right? So that's also something when you work, for example, in school, like with a leaderboard, you could let people know that, um, you know, the first every single month on the leaderboard, by the way, there's still um, things coming for, for the February winners, but the first every month on the winner, uh, on the leaderboard wins a hot seat coaching session with you, right? So you are 
with them on a one-to-one -one coaching call, live streamed um, into the group. So it provides content for the group, but it's also just one person having access to you. And very often being having this in-depth situation with one person is a great learning experience for everyone else and very rewarding for that for, for that person. Another format would be a group coaching format. Right. So if you're just starting out, you don't need to filter or gate that. But as you grow, you would want to have people pre-submit questions, et cetera, so that they can secure a spot so you can handle more volume. And the way a group coaching would work is that people get on a Zoom call with you. And then in an ideal case, if you're bigger, right, if you have more members, you have a moderator that lets you know, OK, what what person is next and you have before the coaching call seen their question so you can now answer it and have a short coaching conversation right so depending on your price tag and uh, the amount of members that you have this conversation will be anywhere from 5 to 15 or 25 minutes um, so group coaching setting is another coaching component that you can add other coaching components that you can add is review sessions right uh, so people can submit something and you offer a, a live review or a recorded review or also um, recorded feedback, right? So people ask a question and you record a video feedback. So there's various containers that you can choose and you really need to know what works best for yourself. I also tell you one thing that I'm considering right now um, in my containers where I have group coaching. I have done the analysis and the interesting thing is that in the last three months, a net total of 30 individuals <laughs> And I'm having in those containers combined over 3,000 people. Out of 3,000 people, 30 unique people have come to the coaching calls, right? So now I'm thinking I'm investing around five hours every single week for those calls to serve 30 out of 3,000 individuals. Is that really purposeful? So I'm right now more considering consolidating the hours into office hours where people have access to me and, and then potentially during the weeks um, offer live coaching calls with my coaches. So many different options that you have. Bottom line is you need some thing here to, to balance out the other things and to create that stickiness for your memberships. And in an ideal world, under promise and over deliver. So if you say I'm it really scares the heck out of me and I can in all transparency, all honesty, after three and a half years of doing this, I still get nervous before every single group coaching call. And with nervous, I mean, on Friday evening, I already dread that we'll have the calls on Monday. Every single time they're nice. Every single time after that, I'm like, why am I making such a fuss about this? It's so nice to connect with the members. It's so productive as well. Um, but I just can't help myself. Like anxiety kicks in and it, it just feels very, very draining still. Um, because I'm more creative. I don't do so well on a particular schedule. So if you know things about th like that about yourself, structure things in a way that they work. And typically, if you have the content and the community in place, if you say, I'm doing two live Q&As a month and I don't know when they will happen, if that's the upfront promise, you can see if that's enough. And very likely it will be, right? So often you just need to know there is some... likely you know you can you can get away with as little as uh, two live q a's a month um in a membership anywhere priced below 50 dollars. long answer <laughs> but i hope it was helpful uh, i think this is a question many people have hi evelyn i would uh you've just talked about what i wanted to ask more details so thank you wonderful I know you suggest to start with a main membership, but the reason I want to start with a mini is that I don't have the capacity to offer weekly Q&As or group coaching calls. I could do one or two a month. You can also, for example, do a multi-tier, right, where you have the evergreen core content community in the mini and two live Q&As. And then you do once a month some sort of implementation workshop with more access to you for the higher tier, right? So in your case, um, if you want to start a main and you know you want to have a mini, so if you if you know at this point, I potentially don't want to have a mini, I just want to have a main, then make your main what I just said, which is content um, community and start with two Q&As a month and see if that's enough uh, to, you know, um, sell it. Because quite, quite a few times it will be, and I also know your niche, right? So you're not in the business niche. There's not so many competitive offers. And I believe that you could start just like that. That's if you know, I don't want to add a mini ever, 
which not everybody with a membership needs to do. Very often it's enough to work with self-liquidating offers in the main membership. If you know, no, 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 my dream is to have a mini, right? I know, I just know it makes sense to start with a main. Try a multi-tiered approach where basically you have what I just said as the mini content community two Q&As a month. And once a month you do a implementation workshop with more access to you for higher tier members. Those are, I think, the two options that you have, right? So make that your main membership. Or if you know, I, no, no, I definitely want a mini as well, do a multi-tiered and make the higher tier offer just a once a month implementation kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, it, that is really, and you know, as soon as I am on the call, I really enjoy it. But before the call, I always read it. And I think it's just, it, it might be an introvert thing. I'm not sure, but I actually was on a call with a lovely strategic partner yesterday and she was like, oh my God, I'm so glad you say that. I always feel like that and I feel like something's wrong with me. I don't even want to tell my team because they will think like I'm ungrateful for the opportunity. I was like, no, I get that. Um, it's just an, it's just an anxiety thing, I, I believe. Okay, so next question, next question is from Shelly. I'm answering around the... 15 minute answering around the 15 minute mark. Okay, I posted in a general discussion that I was doing a four week course. You reviewed my page for Keto Sweet Life Method group coaching program. From there, I wanted to move them into a monthly membership for continued support and accountability in that monthly membership. Now I'm second guessing myself. Should I skip the course and just do the membership and have that content within the membership? Some things would need to be dripped because they are best not to consume all the content at once and become confused and overwhelmed at what to do when. Their body needs time to adapt before you move to the next phase. So some dripping would be needed. I'd love to be able to move forward with just the membership, which is where I want to go, but I don't know if that's the right, if that's right or not. Okay, so beautiful question. I believe that you can't go necessarily right or wrong here. And if you say I'm um, I crave moving forward with just the membership, I'd give myself permission to do that. You can use that four-week guided program as a selling point, right? Towards your founding members. So where you say, you know, I I want to launch this membership i also have a course ultimately i know that you guys will need the ongoing support so that the transformation can last right this is a a continuous commitment we, we can't be four weeks and done but i also love the four-week program because it really kickstarts you and the way it, i designed it it reduces the overwhelm so we can really make sure everybody is on board so for the first and only time i will actually do this four week course live as a group coaching program for everybody who joins me as a founding member is an insane deal, right? For people to consider that they now get a coaching program in the form of a membership. So if I was you, I would use that as the gateway. I would position it in the way that I just described. And then you create that course with members, refine it. And after that, you can use that as a limited time bonus, right? So now let's say we decide that you want to grow your membership and you have a strategic freebie. A great opportunity for us is after the strategic freebie to have a follow-up, introduce your membership, let people know, you know, it's usually closed, but because we just met, I don't want to punish you that we didn't meet earlier, opening the door for 48 hours. And if you join now from the email, you also get this course, right? So really, really beautiful way to create kind of a, offer suite that you can le later leverage towards cold traffic. So I, I believe since you already said, I have the desire to just roll it out as a membership, that's what I would do. If you say, no, I actually feel compelled to, to sell it first as a course and then um, feed people into the continuous program, that's also a completely viable option. In that case, you would just probably need to know that you will have to keep relaunching that program, right? Which when when somebody found a, a launch methodology and workshop or three day event that works for them is not the worst thing in the world, right? Because you already have your things figured out, and you know every quarter or every half a year you can plug that into your routine. Um, a, definitely a viable option. But to me, from the way you've written this, it sounds like you prefer the first methodology. Well, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. 
Okay, so what do you think of challenge as a mini membership, like 90 day challenge at the end, desired outcome, which prepares them for the main? I do like it. So um, one of my strategic partners, Netta, I helped her to create a membership or the, the con I helped her with the concept, right? So um, content is based on, on her teachings and sometimes she infuses um, some of my methodologies, um, the momentum makers. So for example, this month, they will actually have a membership um, a membership challenge to create the concept for your membership. And, and this, the whole membership is based on implementation challenges. So you can check out the concept. Uh, it, we sold this really well. We already have a few hundred members in, although we just started in January. Um, but every single month, there's a specific challenge. Here's the membership membership strategy challenge where she's infusing some of my concepts, but it's a implementation focused challenge that she does every single month. It's forty nine dollars per month membership, um, and so this is what I understand as a challenge membership. If you want to do it in a different way, which I can also assume from the way you have written this, which would be the mini membership is seven dollars a month and the first 90 days basically prep you for the main membership the challenge is that many people might fall off of that and i just know that because the content that i have in coach growth hub the, the 2.0 first three phases i believe if somebody follows this including the pre-launch perfect they can actually within three months have their first money-making offer launched but you know, people get stuck on that. Maybe that would change if we have a, had a rotating challenge every three months where we would keep re-enrolling people into that rotating challenge. I believe that that could work, potentially work better to move people along. But the problem is also that the way I see mini memberships is often that it's a hub where you gather people that would be potentially a good fit for your main membership. And a big component of that is community as well. And very often the people that come into your mini membership, they're at various points in their journey, right? So if Coach Growth Hub was starting to rotate every single month, or if everybody had the feeling that what we do is every 90 days, like getting people through or that challenge of, get, of getting people through, I believe that a lot of people would think, oh yeah, I already know this, like I'm further than that. So I guess what I'm trying to get to is that a mini membership, even if it's a very specific transformation and, and attracts beginners, attracts still beginners with different levels of knowledge and confidence. So while I believe that for more people than they might be aware of, it would be good to actually go through Coach Group Hub again. People will come through, a they sometimes are like, oh, yeah, I know my niche. I don't need to do this training, right? So although it would massively help them to reset that and restructure it and follow the follow the methodology. So for me, what I notice is that it's better if it's more self-paced. And then people witness the conversations in the group. And eventually, they, they feel like, oh, I might have a gap there. Let me get in. And then they're like, oh, this is really helpful, right? So I believe that if I would push people more towards that guided journey earlier, I'd potentially get less people to actually take action on Coach Group Up. But it's the way that this is set up. Um, in your case, maybe, what if you had a mini coaching program, right? So one thing that I did successfully in the past was selling a $97 one week coaching program. And this could be something for you to say, I'm having this $97 one, uh, one week coaching program, consolidate that, right? And then move people from there into my membership. So I believe, I believe that this is more a life launch option than it is something that should be an option in membership. And if it's something that people can do in a 90 day challenge, it is typically challenging enough for people to be a year's worth of a mini membership content. Also, because consider there are people who have a lot of responsibilities, right? They might have, um, you know, family, an existing job, all of that. So somebody who can 
dedicate three hours a day to something versus somebody who can dedicate 30 minutes a day to something, they have a different pace. And it could be that they're just maybe quite a few people left behind because they cannot commit to that challenge format. And the way it's set up in Momentum Makers is that it's once a month, a multiple day implementation challenge. So it's like, okay, you carve out those few days a month. It's like a monthly workshop membership. And then you have the rest of the month to kind of catch up and implement. And I think that's why it works well for people because they feel like mm, it's, it's more doable, if that makes sense. Just considerations. If you have a clear vision for that, I also don't want to say it's not a good idea, right? So if you have a, a really clear vision for that and you and it would have been what you needed, I don't want to discourage you from that. I just want you to consider, you know, different aspects. Okay, next question. I'm answering around the 20, answering around the 20 minute mark. Okay, I have a few questions if you have time to answer them. When I launch, number one, <laughs> when I launch my membership, I want to create a theme for the membership and the sales page, but I'm not sure what I want to permanently keep it, the theme running, but I would love to use the theme for a limited time. It would mainly be a la to launch my membership and maybe last a month or at most. Would this be the best way to go or would it be better to stick with it after I launch it? Or would it be better to just create a challenge with a theme that would funnel into my membership? I believe you answered your question here already. It would be best to create a challenge theme that you can roll out for that month inside the membership as well. And then you have the flexibility to have it going away. Uh, one person who does that beautifully is our wonderful Jessa Bellman. So every single, by the way, if you're an alumni and I don't know how, but missed it. We sent you emails. The offer themes pop-up program is there. Obviously you get replaced, but if you have joined as an alumni in the beginning of the school games, um, you know, just know that this is going on and Jessa has done tremendous work teaching in here. And as you can see, the students are also taking action on the offer theme creation. Um, this is like a pop-up coaching program that she does for the alumni members. And now I want to show you her membership where she basically always, and she, she was teaching, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. She is teaching that as well in the pop-up program. So let me just navigate. Passive Income Society. So that's Chess's main membership on Facebook. And she always has like a monthly theme. So you can see this is March theme. Oh, can I see the past ones? I'm not sure if I can see the past ones, but every single month she comes up with a theme inside her membership and she also updates uh, the banners uh, in the portals, etc. So this is something you can definitely work with on a monthly basis. And I would do it as a live launch theme then remove it and keep your evergreen membership branding then um, a little bit more uh, open. So for example, when you look at Coach Growth Hub, other mini membership, you see that the topic or the theme is kind of growth. So it's all with flowers and, and butterflies, but it, I'm not like seasonally super limited with the theme and it allows me to hold other themes within that. The digital offer builders, on the other hand, this is a, is a theme that will always stay here, but there's still, because we have this kind of um, Greek empire thing, there's still variations that we can do on the theme here, right? So we could do like a, a gladiator theme, we can do a feast theme, uh, we can, uh, I don't know, Poseidon theme, right? So there's so many different methodologies and, and associations people have. So we think that the umbrella theme is broad enough for us to play with sub themes in, within that, if that makes sense. So when you think of an evergreen membership theme, make sure that 
it is either generic enough yet related to your membership so that it allows you to hold more themes within that or you know if it's more specific make sure that the umbrella theme offers enough associations and sub stories so you can never run out of uh, offer themes that makes sense okay so there was a second question within that question um also for those of us that are, we're not finished with our bold promise in time for the challenge. Will there be another opportunity for feedback or is there another way to get feedback to make sure we're on the right track? So if you are in Founders and Ads Pro or Coaching Membership Method, there is the opportunity for everyone to submit copy on a weekly basis and have it reviewed by the team. Here in the Offer Builders, I will definitely do copy reviews as often as I can. I intend to do it on a weekly basis. So there will be continuous opportunities for you to receive feedback. Um, right now, we have to work through the pain points. So my, my vision and goal for this really is that at the end of the day, in the copy school, I have detailed reviews for every single section, and then I can consolidate the training for every single section again. And once that is done, I'll probably just start top up again towards the bottom. Um, so that that's the vision for the offer themes, uh, for the offer builders. So there will be more opportunities uh, to have it reviewed for sure. And I believe that this could also be, you know, pop up challenge this, that I potentially um, run in the memberships too. So um, there will be more opportunities in the future for sure. I know how important it is. You know, if you don't want to wait, watch the trainings, ask your peers for honest feedback. Um, and use the opportunities as they come. You can also try, you know, under this Q&A post to share it. If I have time on the Q&As, if it, if it doesn't get too excessive for members, I can also give feedback on the Q&As. What do you think uh, of a challenge as a menu? As a, oh, oh, we have that. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I left the one week, $97 coaching um, week and then leading them to the main. What live launch style would you recommend when launching the first time? Live launch event, challenge, webinar, coaching week. For the very first time, I actually recommend lazy launching. So really just doing an email sequence and social media post launch. The second easiest modality is a workshop launch. Uh, please check out in the offer builders, we have this dashboard uh, workshop to mini offer. The cool thing about launching, um, and I'm still reworking some of the things. So it's uh, um, I still have to evergreen her offer, but the steps towards that are all in there. Um, but the cool thing about doing a workshop as a live launch is that you have the live launch event and you also create a mini offer at the same time, right? So it's a, a great way for you to validate your mini idea, do a live launch event and then have something to package into a self-liquidating offer, right? Um, so not every single live workshop that you do will be a huge success as a mini offer. But even if you can just have one that runs profitably at 20 or $25 a day, you know, every single day that can create a huge lift. And typically every third to fifth mini offer, you find a real scalable winner. So that's a good opportunity. Uh, the third um, thing that I recommend is really a three day challenge. Um, so how I teach it in the live launch dashboard um, for founders and as for coaching mini membership method, that is the, the one that I would always use, you know, when it really matters. So for example, launching coaching mini membership method or the main membership, this is what I would do. Um, what I would eventually work out and have want to have as an asset in my business and do twice a year. But easiest is lazy launch post and social media, email and social media posts. Second one would be the workshop one because you can also create a self-liquidating offer. So that's a really good place for beginners. And then eventually you want to have a sophisticated challenge in your business that you can run twice a year to really create those those bigger income spikes, right? So all my six figure launches, I did four in the last, in 2023, um, was challenges. So because a workshop is fantastic, but the amount of time you spend with people, the amount of value you can provide is just limited. And the more time you spend and the more value you provide, the, the warmer the audience becomes, the better you sell whatever is on the back end, right? So um, just as an income spike creator twice a year, it's a beautiful option and it's something I would, it's a system and an asset I would want every one of you to have in their business. 
and good morning. I recently started my ads to my freebie in just under 48 hours. I already have 18 leads. Good, good, good. And one pound 39 cost per lead. That sounds like you found a winning freebie. Generally, how long would you keep an ad running as long as the CPA uh, cost per lead is low? Yes. So in an ideal world as well, you always have an audience growing ad running um, at five to ten dollars a day is beautiful. Now, your biggest task is to actually see um, this cost per lead is great. Maybe there are some options that we can optimize, right? So when you look at your stats, you would want to say, is my CTR all above 4%? That means my visual is scroll stopping enough. Is my um, CTR link click for rate above 1.5%? That means that my ad copy is um, attractive or works good enough, right? Um, and if both of those stats are met, it might just be a matter of your CPM, CPM needs to come down because you need to warm up your account. If those numbers are below that, might be worth actually to, to test a few different creatives or copy depending on where you know it's weak. Right now, it's way too early for you to say, so let it run for at least a week before you um, look into the ad stats for the first time. Now that you have this, your next job is to make sure that your welcome sequence works well or your welcome email and that you have um, nurture emails, right? So sending a valuable email two to three times a week to really build up your list. I, I don't get, there's a post in the offer builders that I want to draw your attention to actually. That is how um, sales email. I think, or how we drive sales. Yeah, we use email to drive sales. Here's how. I'd love for you to check that out and then um, really focus on nurturing this email list. In the beginning, you know, you'll invest in your list. And for most people, their email list, my email list was profitable in the first um, 30 days in conjunction with a Facebook group, right? So I had the social um, media and I had the email list and I invested around $1,500 into growing the list and growing the group. And I sold my one-to-one -one package as a beta for a total of $10,000. So I had 10 clients and I was selling it for $9.97 for a 12-week one-to-one program. So that was great for me, but not everybody has that. And after, I also want to say after this initial month where I did the lazy lounge, there were no sales basically from my email list. So, or minimal sales, not in a way that it was really breaking even. My email list started to really carry itself after the first six months. And after the first year, it started to get really profitable. And now it's three years later, it's wildly profitable. The first $50,000 in monthly recurring revenue on the school games was just from emails. So there was no ads or anything involved. It was just from the email traffic. So your job now is to say, I am building this asset and I'm really nurturing um, and, and keeping it going. And, you know, potentially also saying if, if that's scary that five to $10 go out every single day, working on your first mini offer, maybe with pre-selling a workshop, right? Um, that's the process we already have in here. Um, so you can offset some of that ad spend and also potentially add a self-liquidating offer to the mix so you can grow your audience faster and do so from the cash flow your front-end offer sales generate. Is the theme offer only for alumni, also for coming alumni or for past? Also coming alumni will have access to the replay. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. So right now I am, I'm consolidating, right? So what I'm working on right now, mostly like where, where, I mean, I'm working on a lot of stuff parallel because I'm also working with a lot of strategic partners, right? So I'm creating multiple things at the same time and content for our PLR membership. So that's always there. But my core focus right now is completely overhauling the evergreen core content of Coach Growth Hub and Funnels and Ads Pro um, in the way that I did it with Offer Builders. So Offer Builders, the good thing is that the evergreen core content, I really made evergreen. So there are no things in there that will be outdated. And so I need to make sure I'm doing the same again for Coach Graph Hub and especially Funnels and Ads Pro, and then have the fill up pieces 
where it's things that can be outdated. For example, Facebook ad setup, right? They change the interface every few months or make the integration between your Facebook lead ads and your email autoresponder. Those guys, I think, change it every single month. And so my mis the mistake that I made in front of an ad pro also because it's my oldest membership, to be fair, right? So I didn't have that system figured out about the, the that I teach in the offer builders, right? So you have your evergreen core content and your deliverables and you fill up over time. I haven't had that system figured out. So I was baking in not evergreen content into the core content, which is now that, that the core content has also longer videos. There's a there's 80% in that video is still true and 20% are outdated because I'm showing something in an ad account that is not evergreen and it is embedded in that core content video. And now that core content suddenly feels completely outdated for members, although just the interface of Facebook ads changed, right? So now I actually need to go back, make the core content really evergreen, and then the implementational content film shorter videos that I can exchange faster as those platforms update, right? So um, that is my focus for now from like in my business, then making sure, um, you know, getting all the, the sales pages offers things, uh, support done for strategic partners and uh, pre-work a little bit more of secret weapon content. And then I'm ready for, uh, you know, another launch, but potentially, or, um, potentially launch, I always say launch. I know that this is something different, but in, in German you say launch and not launch. So <laughs> I always say this wrong, it's deeply embarrassing. Um, so I believe that I need to consolidate and clean up. And if I relaunch, potentially I might change the deliver delivery of coaching mini membership method because the ultimate goal for coaching mini membership method was always mm, to turn it into a flagship course, like a self studier. So potentially that, but it will take a while. So that was a long answer. Um, right now I'm, I'm just in consolidation mode. I don't plan another life challenge anytime soon i think the next one will be for memberships and it might be the last time that coaching mini membership method is a yearly program but i'm not sure about that i know people are like it's a thing now. <laughs> do you think lazy lounge works great also for done for you like vip day offers yes 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 um yes i believe that and I actually also think that, so for example, VIP day offers, I looked into what kind of coaching offers did I personally buy in the last year and it is memberships, but, and VIP days, like I bought quite a few VIP days and I really think that, uh, and from the memberships that I joined actually. So I, I believe a VIP day is a really good cash flow offer. Um, for a membership owner, because I typically would join the membership and then I would, sometimes I would message the person if they have a VIP day and sometimes they would have it and I would grab it. One example of that is for Jonas. He's a strategic partner as well, a chatbot club. So I joined his membership, right? Genius. And he, his trainings are all like really, really good and on point, but I was like, okay, I don't have the time to do that. And then I learned that he has a VIP day and I was like, okay, yes, build me this. And he built me this beautiful onboarding chatbot for coaching membership method and a beautiful chatbot for Instagram. I could have in, in not a year, I would have found the time to actually do that. So I've, I believe that done for you offers and especially VIP days are beautiful upsell offers for memberships that really help members that are at a point where they can afford it and just don't have the time to go for your membership content. And now before you say it, I know that a lot of you also want me to offer that. Let me get my content updated first and then I might be offering VIP days because I also, in the, in the school games, I got a lot of messages, beauti beautiful messages actually from people that were like, I know you think that it's not okay to charge high ticket, but you do the people who are at this point and can easily afford it at this service by not offering it. So if you just filter right, you actually can help more people. And I do see that. And I believe I could, for example, commit to offering VIP days, but first I need to make sure that the majority of the members are taken care of really, really well. And for me, it's, it urges me to overdo the 
content in especially Finance and Ads Pro ASAP. <laughs> Interesting. And you about your 10K first launch, but I didn't realize it took a year for your email list to be profitable. Yeah, to be truly tro profitable, yes. Um, and it's important to know that, right? But also, I, I really want to say it because I was thinking in the beginning, I, you know, you hear all those things floating around. The money is in the list and you earn on average $1 per month per email subscriber. And I was like, yes, I need a list. And then I had a list. And then after the first, I think that was in around August when I was like, I don't think there's any money in the list. Like I've been providing value for half a year now, almost. I don't think there's any money in the list. And then in September, I um, lazy launched my uh, membership and I got 11 members from a group where with 2000, over 2000 people and a email list with over 1500 people. I was like nine members. Okay, there's no money in the list. But eventually, you know, because I didn't stop nurturing, it really started to compound. And then that was in September. And in January, I lost my ad account and got shut down. Um, and then I only had my email list. And then I really panicked and I got very, very serious. And then I eventually sold a paid workshop for $49, which is zero to, was zero to audience. And first off, that saved me because it reset it. Um, a lot of the content in funnels and ads for you you guys always think like you're behind but you should have seen the content and the membership in the beginning i sometimes show it it's it was like bare bones right and it was good enough to have 100 members um you know you have to keep evolving but also being okay with a minimum viable product i think that's really important to know and then i i sold the workshop i redid that i i sold uh funnels and ads pro on the back end of that workshop and eventually over the three months it took to have an ad account back, um, I was really living from emails and from this one workshop launch that, that kind of helped me over water with the existing members. And that, the, in those three months, I really understood like email is the lifeline. When, when it comes down to it, that's what you have. And so that, that's when I got really committed about emails. And when you get really committed, you really start to see returns. So. Uh, that's why I want, and I want this for everyone. Uh, on the weekend, I set up for my sister a, a, a lead generation campaign and her email list because I was like, love, no matter what you do, you need this. This is exactly what you need. And you don't even need to know what you need to, uh, uh, you know, what you offer. Just write from your soul and let people participate in your inner world, provide value through that. And I guarantee you, no matter what you want to do, if you want to do something later, you have an audience to launch to and you can sell from coffee mugs to art to coaching whatever you want if you've really um you know communicated with those people and provided value by processing your experience for them so i want this in an ideal world everyone to have in place this is why you also have to step-by-step -step audience growth ads in the offer builders so check that out <laughs> what can i do if those that opt in fit my mini membership, don't check off to receive my marketing emails. Um, so if they subscribe, but they don't want to receive the emails, in that case, I would post in the groups and in the memberships uh, the reminder to subscribe because you send important reminders and bonus materials via email. So just let them know that there is something uh, rewarding to get if they subscribe to the email and that you let them know like super transparently and I'm bribing you with the goodies that you only get via email because you need to be on email so that you can receive the full value from this membership. Just be super clear with people. Is YouTube ads or how to launch a TikTok shop or um, campaign taught in any of your memberships? I'm considering turning mini membership method but don't like to focus but I'd like to focus on YouTube, TikTok, and Pinterest. I'm so sorry. I have to honestly say we focus on Facebook ads there. Um, it's the methodology that I'm using mainly. I do run a few YouTube retargeting ads, but it's probably like 3% of my ad budget that goes there. So um, I can't teach what I don't use, unfortunately. But, you know, thank you for the interest. Um, also, I um, don't have a TikTok shop where I don't post a lot of content there. I do have a YouTube channel and I have to say that it works extremely well as a secondary 
source because I'm sending people a lot to my YouTube videos, which is where they really connect and have the trust to convert. So um, I wouldn't want to miss my YouTube channel, but in itself, it would also not be enough to grow my memberships. And I know that this is because I'm not consistent on YouTube, right? At the same time, I'm having so many members to serve and show up for because I used Facebook ads that the most content I create is actually paid content. So I also do enjoy that. And eventually after some cleaning up, I also want to get um, a really solid routine for YouTube in place. I do now work with Matthew, uh, who runs the School Game podcast. Um, and so I have hired him for podcast management and we will do that. So I have something consistently going on. Um, but that's all the YouTube effort. So long story short, it's not there because it's not what I've used to grow. Okay, so what strategy would you use if you had 3.5K to invest, a new ad account, no membership, really starting from zero, and you had six months to build something to make at least 30 to 50K once after the six months? Beautiful question. I would invest everything into lead gen ads. And I would nurture the heck my soul out of my body um, to provide value. Um, and then I would launch a beta program by the end of that month. I would pre-sell it. So I would really make sure to get a good idea of what people need by just serving. Okay. You also need a place to, to so you need the email list, right? So when you do Legion ads, you have, you send them to your email list and you also send them to a social media place. The easiest place to send them to is a Facebook group. And I'm not wanting to talk against school. I love school. But the only thing is that when you grow your free community um, using this approach, you can send people from the thank you screen of your lead form to a Facebook group without any friction, right? So very often, 50% of the people that join your email list also immediately join your Facebook group where you can nurture. It's debatable if you want to send them to a Facebook group or a school community. Because Facebook will give people a warning, oh, careful, you're leaving the ecosystem. Fewer people would join your school community right away. But if you would nurture really well in the emails, you could actually get more people to join your school community. And an advantage would be that more people see your posts, right? So Facebook decides the reach in your free Facebook group. And that's why it's very often really hard to get the engagement of the community off the ground in a Facebook community. So you have to decide. Few people will join right now. You'll have a bigger effort in the emails, but the people that do join will see your post. So there's a higher chance for engagement, but school community is paid versus Facebook community is free. This is the information you make in your decision. So you have done your email list and your free community. You nurture the heck out of that in your community because you serve for free. You get with people on a call for free, right? You, you really help them where you can. You understand what transformation they need you create a beta offer on that. You write the sales page first, right? As we teach. So you really follow that, that plan. And then after six months, you first lazy launch and then you do uh, either a workshop or a live launch event to sell that beta and really fill it up. And then how you price that container, right? If you say 30 to 50K, you would need to decide, right? So is it a one-to-one -one container? And is it, will it be really high touch? Then maybe you do a six months program for 5K and you take six people. That's $30,000, right? And people are doing that. Or, you know, you say, oof, that, that sounds like a lot. Maybe it is a group coaching program for three months and it's $1,000. Then you need to get 30 people. But I do believe that with 3.5K in ad spend, if you have the right strategic freebie, you can grow a list of three to 4,000 people and a free community. If you really nurture, if you have 4,000 people, what conversion rate do you need? Just one second. Um, now, now we need to do the math. So you have... I have a calculator. I don't know if you know that. That's in pre-launch perfect if you're also in Coach Growth Up for Funds and Ads Pro. Okay. So 
you have an engaged audience, email plus the engaged social media. So how many people really see a post? 4,000, I don't think is unrealistic with that ad spend. Then we have the launch participants, conversion rate on the launch for your first launch. I don't think you can, uh, um, uh, you know, have that particularly more higher. So actually think on the first launch, it's more realistic if it's 3% and it's more realistic if it's 0.25% from the rest of your audience. So you might be able to get 40 says, yeah, if it's a, if it's a thousand dollar group coaching thing or 997 group coaching thing, I believe you can reach your goal. And obviously conversion rate goes down, right? The, the higher your price. So maybe if you have a $5,000 tag, you can only convert 0.5% and maybe no percent here. And that's five people, five times five, 25,000. You're a little bit below that, but could still work. And, and those are healthy conversion rates, right? For those price tags. This is now set up with when you launch a membership for the first time, average conversion rates based on my experience and what we see with members who followed the pre-launch perfect strategy. So yeah, that's what I would do. And full focus on nurturing, right? No distractions with building a self-liquidating offer, etc. And I don't want to say that building a self-liquidating offer does not make sense, right? Because many of us don't have $3,500 to invest in audience growth without having something to offset the cost of the growth quicker. And some people feel also like I need definitely longer for nurture. Um, and so I just want to have something set up that offsets my cost, my audience growth costs while I figure the rest out. So when after it, in my world, it always starts with getting a rough idea of the money making offer you want to launch, right? So draft at least the bold promise in an ideal world, the whole, whole sales pitch, so you really have clarity. Reverse engineer the strategic freebie, start your audience growth ads, start nurturing, and then you can go one of two paths. You can say, okay, my main priority right now is to offset that cost because I just get nervous or I just can't afford it. So that focus then is self-liquidating offer. Quickest one is potentially with the workshop to self-liquidating offer. Or people are like, okay, I don't necessarily care about that money leaving right now. I'm okay to invest that. Then the full focus is on nurture until you actually uh, feel my audience size, right? Based on this, audience size is big enough and warm enough for me to be able to hit my goals. That's kind of the two ways it goes. And then those people typically then next have the audience growing offer uh, that um, have the self liquidating offer because after the launch, you have to continue your audience growth, right? But you have less time for nurturing and that's good then to introduce a self liquidating offer. Yeah, I think, you know, if you really focus on nurturing and the attractiveness of your offer, I don't think it's unrealistic. Do you still think having bare bones is enough to sell a membership considering more businesses are moving to this model? It's just as you speak about tangible products having to be more. Uh, so I believe that it's a really good idea to start with a minimum viable product. When you think of how we have launched the uh, digital offer builders for the school games, this has been a minimum viable product, right? So we just had the evergreen core content and a few tangible deliverables. We invited our alumni to help us, you know, shape that, see what requests they have. Um, and then we opened it up to the public. In my opinion, digital offer builders is still minimum viable product stage, right? So uh, as you see, I'm doing the bold promise challenge. Now the pain points, I'm actually filling up the things that are missing. And I would love for you to still be in a year in a year or return in a year to see what we have turned it into. Um, but I could have never foreseen more than I have built in that beginning. And so that's my recommendation to start out like that. Take the time for the sales page, take the time for the branding, have the solid evergreen core content, a few highly attractive, tangible deliverables, and then lean into serving your members. That is what I would consider still like a minimum viable product, right? To, to start out. And with that, you are already, you know, 10 steps ahead of the curve. But also if you follow the process in the digital offer builders, we built this within seven days, right? So 
you know, maybe you take five times as long as we because you've never done this. But then still, if you follow the process, it should be possible in, in a month, right? Um, or even if you need 10 times as long, it should be possible in a couple of months. Um, and that's the minimum minimum viable product that I would start with. And also, it doesn't have to be as polished as we because we competed in the school games, right, against other top marketers and we really wanted to uh, have a chance to compete. Uh, it doesn't have to meet this kind of level also because very likely your goal is not to have immediate or maybe it's a goal, right? But it might be unrealistic on the first launch around to expect 80,000. Um, and your membership is just a co one component of the success, right? So the other component is the of the success is your audience. People who nurture really well and provide a lot of value can actually get away with just pre-selling because people are buying them from a place of reciprocity and trust, not from a place of being persuaded by the attractiveness of the offer, if that makes sense. So the, the minimum viable product of your membership and how good that needs to be, there's, there's like two levers you have and they kind of outbalance each other, right? So you would also want to see where's my strength, is my strength in the nurturing piece, double, triple down on that. It can outbalance if you're not that good with, you know, the content, or if you still need time to evolve in the content creation, or you extremely good at polishing things, making them attractive copy, you can get away with less audience nurture because you have something more attractive. So those are two levers that you have, and you can outbalance one area with the other by leaning into your strength. Okay. Do you think having bare bones is enough to sell a membership considering more and more business are moving to this model? What? Okay. Tension paralysis having to be more professionalized. Is it not the same with memberships? Um, I believe memberships need to be more professionalized over time, but you also have to think about the market you compete in. So memberships now get more popular for example in the coaching or b2b sphere but first off when things okay so when things start to trend the market starts to grow because if more and more people advertise for memberships more and more people become aware of memberships it becomes a bigger thing so with competition yes competition grows and we need to professionalize but the first thing that happens when competition kicks in and when things start to take up is that the overall market grows. And we even see this with school, right? So the more communities are, the bigger school gets, the bigger the overarching community gets, and the more opportunity is there for the existing communities. Since we ended like playing in the school games and we didn't have any ads or any uh, email marketing towards it, we got 300 new members just from being placed on the school community. And a big portion of that is, of course, right now they, they drive traffic as well, but the overall the overall market grows. And so if your offer is positioned well in that market, your chunk of that market grows as well. The more offers we have, the more they start competing with each other, the more each offer kind of needs to up level, right? But there's always the opportunity to make your own market by, for example, having a strategic freebie, nurturing, and then offering those people your membership that don't have a frame of reference for all the other memberships. And then you can grow with those people and eventually over time, sophisticate your membership. Another option out of that, instead of just quote unquote, creating your own market is to say, okay, there's now um, an ecosystem of memberships. How do I find my niche within those, right? So now if you think about, for example, funnels and ads pro coaching men membership method, they are really considered now, right? It didn't, it wasn't when I started, but considered now, they are broadly positioned and everything that's broadly positioned can not do the best job at serving in, in a niche problem. So for example, if now somebody would want to compete with me specifically, they could, for example, make a membership focusing solely on launching or solely on mini offers, right? Or I don't know, solely on email marketing for coaches, course creators, right? So there's always an opportunity in a growing market as well to compete with big players 
that are likely more polished, etc., on specificity. Those are the options that you have, right? So make your own market, nurture, grow, so you become a competitor and can harvest more of that overall market growth because you are a viable option. And then to become an even more viable option in a growing market with competition, you need to find your niche and position yourself sharply against what others do wrong. I wrote a post about this um, in the school games, I think the other day, where I encourage people go through the school discovery page. Right in the beginning, you see what works best. Make a list of everything where you feel like I could make a membership about this as well, based on my experience. Based on all the things you find, analyze what are they doing well? What do I like about their positioning? What do I dislike about their positioning? What do I disagree with? What should they be doing better? And then make exactly that thing, right? So this is a really great way to find your positioning. So as competition gets deeper, yes, you need to professionalize. But you also need to differentiate, if that makes sense. <laughs> oh, did I understand correctly that Facebook affects how much private reach your private Facebook group have? Can you elaborate a little more on what this means? It's terrible. I, I want to rant about it. I, can, I, I don't want to tell you more about it. I want to rant about it. In our Facebook group that has 6,000 members, a really good post can reach 2,000 people. In school, I can reach every single person with my post. If I want to, I, I can toggle on. I can toggle on if I want to send a post as an email. Let me show you this. Important message I want all members to see. Send an email. I can literally shoot an email to all of you because I want you guys to come back into community and see my post. School doesn't filter, you know, who sees what as well. And if people fall, people can set their own notification settings, but most of all have the default and see mostly what you post in here, right? So you have much bigger reach than in a Facebook group. In a Facebook group, on a good day, you see my, my group here has six this is our paid community right our private paid community people see in my private paid community ads from my competitors when they look through the guides on mobile and i've seen this because people have sent me screenshots there are ads from my competitors in my own group which is i think insane <laughs> so and then if you think about it here so this is a post for weekly q a questions this post only reaches 111 members and of course, Facebook has the opportunity to have an add everyone and tag everyone. But most people are really allergic to those notifications. And actually, we have our members saying, please, guys, stop using this feature. We hate it. So we really have that reach problem in our Facebook communities. And this is also why, you know, or a reason why I will keep having to pay somebody to manage the, the Facebook communities first. I, I love my team. I'm grateful for the work that they do. I think they make a huge difference for our members as well. Um, at the same time, it's not insignificant cost to offer 24 hour written support on a weekday. And I could never take this away from Facebook because when members post in the group, it barely gets any reach. So members often can't even help their peers because they don't see their posts. And that's really becoming an increasing problem with Facebook, right? Facebook prefers to show people old viral posts from, I don't know, Taylor Swift or that keto meal. Nobody cares about, but people don't see the messages from the communities that they're paying to be a part of. And that's a problem. So yeah, that's a problem for everybody who has a paid community and a free community for sure as well. Mm. What do you think about Manish? Personal branding and project completion for female creative entrepreneurs. Personal branding and project completion for female creative entrepreneurs. They have issues to build brand because they never finish their projects. I like that. I do believe you have to do projects with them. I do believe doing like seeing what kind of projects they work on and then 
doing projects together might be a really good idea. I think it's a good niche. I think it's a really good niche. Um, and I believe it's an offer that would work with your goal as well, because there's enough demand. If you do a beta program, it can be around one of the tasks that they keep procrastinating on. And so for example, a program I'd likely buy is I overhaul your membership content with you. That's super niche. But for example, the content creation for a paid program and getting really getting that done in a beautifully branded way that it that it's uh, really streamlined. I believe something like that would be a beta with a very tangible outcome that people will pay for. So I think you have many, many options for things that you offer them. I just wouldn't position the money making offer like in general, as in the transformation is that you complete projects because people will be like, but what projects? Like I have so many and I don't even know which one is worth completing. So you kind of need to pick for them, I believe. I'm on mini membership method and help coaches create their funnels. I'm thinking that could be a $7 membership, but then a $97 membership, the main one can be done for you. What do you think? Uh, oh, done for you for $97 is could be challenging. So done for you, you would be, you implement that funnel and you customize the branding, etc. I believe that the because the funnel the technical funnel building and design is just one piece of the equation. You could potentially run into issues because people's offers are not converting, right? And then they could blame you for that. So if the 97 is a done for you, you need to set really, really clear expectations or, you know, make it higher priced and take fewer people that are a better fit, which is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Just something to consider that could consume your life if you're not careful. I have 50 members in my free group and an average five people see my post. It's really hard to start a conversation because a few people see it, then they don't want to react because nobody reacts. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. And with Facebook groups, it's really, especially like you started and once that momentum is lost, it's really hard to build that up again. And, and I don't like that you're so much at the mercy of Facebook. But then again, right, when you use a lead generation ad to grow it, it's a it's the most affordable way to grow a community where you can communicate. Um, it has the disadvantage of the reach. On the other hand, school, you, you reach more people, right? But you need to work a little bit harder to get them in. Uh, and it's $97 a month for the community. So it is just knowing that there is no better, that there those are the best alternatives and then saying, what downside affects me le least, if that makes sense. Um, I just need to quickly make sure I'm not missing my appointment. Okay, I can do 30 more minutes, sweeties. I'm a little concerned with churn. Do you experience high churn rate for the 97? No, I experience higher churn rates for my seven than for my 97. And it's interestingly enough. If you have a, a smaller container, um, it's often a higher, but I want to say that 49 is also higher churn, but the 97 is the um, typically, I mean, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I need to clarify. 97 is for us a payment plan. So this is why we barely have any churn. $49, we also have lower churn than in the $7, but obviously affects the monthly recurring revenue more but the highest churn we have in the lowest price membership when you do facebook ads for seven dollar membership do you recommend also advertising in low income countries personally for me it only ever worked to do top four uh, which is united states canada australia and the united kingdom those were my top four countries What is the difference between launch ads to be directly with lead ads or traffic lead ads to the group link? The difference is that you first collect the email address and you would always want to prioritize that because you can't control how many people you reach in the live launch event. 
when you have their emails, you can download the live recording you did in the live launch event, upload it to YouTube, send people the resources and the videos via email as well. And this is actually what really made a difference of uh, 2.5% in the conversion rates on my launches since I started doing that. So you would want to prioritize lead gen ads over traffic ads directly to the group because you have the email address. Now, of course, you might be saying, but I can just ask people for their email address when they join the group and don't approve when they don't give it. But you'll see that on average, it costs you more to get that email address. If you really want to, you know, test one over the other out. But I personally think it's better to not have any questions for the group. So there's no friction of people joining the live launch event and just capturing the email address quicker. Yeah. Yes, I am in Austria at the moment. I always want to go to Lisbon, so I'd love, I'd love to visit that. It's on my bucket list to see. Okay, next question, next question. Pre-submitted one. Okay, I'm answering around the one hour and 10 minute mark. How do I revive my $7 membership? I launched getting to a year now, but I've got up to seven members who joined and left at various times. They don't join the training and sometimes one person may join the bi-weekly live q and A. I I did so for some months and stopped. Now I'm left with just two. Honestly, I'm doing nothing on it. It's a multi-tier. No one joined the main. I've done a few SLOs with the option to buy or join in the past. Okay. So, you know, with two, okay, I'm, I'm just showing the membership as well. It's well made for sure. Um, and also a great topic. So what I want to say is that right now with two members left, there's not much to do with the with the current members, right? So um, what I would be doing next is to say, um, what is my is my ever so just quickly review is my evergreen core content still on point, right? So is the transformation still valid? Is there anything about the bold promise about the general positioning that I want to update about the membership? So really take an inventory and say, is this still the transformation I need to offer based on what I experienced? If or once that's a check, you would want to say, okay, now that I'm looking at my evergreen core content, what do I believe would work really well as um, monthly content that I can turn into a self liquidating offer. Look into the workshop to mini offer and start using those option offers to validate front end offer ideas. So you would want to on a monthly basis until you find a winner, come up with a workshop idea. And you know, if you can't do it every month, that's fine. Do it every other month. Um, come up with a workshop idea, write the sales page for it, offer it to your email list and let people know, Hey, participate in, live, in the workshop for $9 or get it for free in my membership. I think I would focus on that until I have really found a winning front end offer because, you know, your membership needs that growth for that dynamic to happen. And seven members um, might have just, you know, not been uh, enough to do that. So get the lead gen ads up so your audience can grow, start the nurture again, and then, um, you know, revisit what you have. Use that revisitation process also for insight that you can repurpose as content um, towards your list and then um, try to find your winning option offer. Can you share a percentage of churn rate you experience from 7, um, 47, 97? So 97, like I said, barely anything because we have a payment plan and it's only if somebody goes unpaid that they churn, which is then we remove and we let them know and most people pick up the payment plan again. Um, the cleaned up churn rate from the mini membership is 11% a month. 
and the cleaned up churn rate from the $49 membership is 7% a month. Würdest du in diesem Livestream auch ein paar Landingpage-Reviews machen? Ich launche morgen und mein, äh, mein erstes Slot-Ticket auf. Sure, fire it away. Drop the link and I'll do that. Do you have any resources about how to run your team and which tasks you give them and which task you must do yourself? We do have a training on that in Coaching Mini Membership Method, like very detailed. I just want to give you the quick rundown of the things that I do personally. So I personally still deliver a big part of the coaching in my communities. I do have now somebody really built up to the point and it took us a year to get to the point, um, but she does now the ad calls. Um, then we have copy calls as well. So I now have more help with the coaching calls, which is also one reason why I'm thinking about changing the modality. But a core part of the coaching component, Q&As, coaching calls, still has to come from me because a reason big reason why people stay is because they just want to stay connected with me and have that access to me. So I do still a big chunk of the coaching component. I do all the content components, right? Also because I realized that it's just nothing I can outsource and the content work is the shaping of my signature framework and methodologies. It is almost like writing a book. It's uh, <laughs> that conceptual and creative burden that nobody can take off of me. So that is, that is always on my plate. I do still um, communicate with my audience. So I cannot have anyone writing my emails or writing my social media posts. I really see the difference when something comes from me. What I do have now is I have a beautiful person, uh, Tara. She is um, also a strategic partner. Her membership is Instaglow. So you can look her up, Social Runway on Instagram. She actually takes my content, my email content, and she takes my live coaching calls and she takes my workshop, uh, my workbooks and, and trainings from within the memberships and repurposes that into visual graphics. So let me just chill that. That is the only content piece I was able to really successfully outsource. So she takes that content that I again wrote and she really breaks it down into beautiful posts and she just makes it in an instant digestible format, which I always struggled with because I just want to package all the knowledge in there. So um, that is something that, that I have help with. I still write all the sales pages so I cannot outsource offer creation. I still write all the launch emails, launch content. So that is something that I think I will never be able to also give away. And I also don't want that. I do have help with servicing the community, 24 hour rich and supporting coach growth hub. I do have help with the coaching component, right? Increasingly. I, again, I think there's still room for me to, to take off some burden from me um, over time, but a, a portion will always have to stay me. I do have um, people doing email, uh, doing account management, handling uh, cancellations and all of that. I do have a big accounting team, have somebody who helps me to, my dad, <laughs> to get all the numbers right and consolidated and over to my accounting team. Um, what else? I have an operational manager that helps me to make sure to oversee the team. So, you know, there's always... Uh, cover for everything. So um, I don't have to worry when somebody's off, etc. All the support and all the email is always covered. And that is something that needs management in itself, right? Um, then what else do I have help with? So the, the, the copy reviews is something that I have help with because I can't do all of them myself anymore. And then in the free Facebook group, the, the, the moderation I have helped with. I have helped people answering comments and questions under my ads and on social media. So basically, I do have support completely outsourced. Outsourced, outsourced. Um, I do have a part of the coaching outsourced. I do have accounting and uh, getting my numbers in place outsourced. And I do have help with managing my ads on a day-to-day -day basis. So I provide the strategy. I provide the visuals um, and the copy and the creative strategy and the offers. 
but I do have somebody that I just shoot it over at Tribe. Highly recommend them as an agency. And they set it up and they, um, so when I have a change, I'm not going in myself and make the change, but I'm, I'm saying, okay, here's what I see. I would like you to turn this around. And they go in and they do the task for me. Um, I'm looking or I'm, I'm building up my team more in helping me set up the technical side of the funnel, right? So hooking up conversion API and, um, you know, doing the tech admin. So that's something that I'm, that I'm building up right now. But at the core, what's always with me is, the, is every, everything that's written and content that's always from me. Okay, so then Jonah, I will look. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Jonah, Jonah, where are you then? Could you post a link for me? You can delete a comment after you can just post a link here as well. Just can't find, I just can't find it right now. Okay. So another question. I'm answering around one hour and 20 minute mark. Answering around one hour and 20 minute mark. Okay, hi Evelyn. So much great info in school. Thank you so much. My question plus is about lead magnet or SLO mini offer and clarification on mini offer scope. Okay. Oh, that's a long one. Okay, let me go through it. Do I have to do a lead magnet or can I do a self-liquidating offer or mini offer? You don't have to do a lead magnet. You can do a mini offer as well, but a lead magnet is great because you warm up your ad account for significantly lower cost. You immediately get something in exchange for your ad dollars, which is an email address, which you don't always get, right? With a self-liquidating offer up until the point where you made it click, you get very little other than data and information back for your advertisement dollars, right? So when you have a strategic freebie, you immediately get that email. And even though you might not be profitable right away, if you keep nurturing, you're definitely profitable very soon. And over the lifetime, people who come from strategic freebies always provide a much higher return on your investment. So it's good to warm up your ad account. Um, it is really a great investment and return on investment if you can stick with it. And it gives you um, and it, it, it gives you more reach sooner, right? So it, it just grows your audience quicker sooner. If you think about if you spend $20 a day, you might be able to get one or two self-liquidating offer sales, which is one or two people on your email list. If you spend the same $20 on a lead gen campaign, you can get potentially 20 subscribers, right? So depends on your audience size and on your goals, but I personally would not want to miss out on lead magnets. Do I have to do ads with self-liquidating offer or can I offer self-liquidating offer first on social and take the winning ones to ads after proof of concept and use as cash for ad spend. I absolutely love the idea of launching your mini offers first to your audience on social media. The only thing is that a warm audience will respond differently than a cold audience. So your warm audience already knows, likes and trusts you and they know what you're about and you have had a conversation. So they see your offer in context, in the context of your parasocial relationship and in the context of everything they have learned from you already. So when you put that same winning offer that you have sold successfully for warm audience towards ads, it might not sell. Right? So that's just something to consider. I personally always love to create my mini offers for a cold audience or with a cold audience in mind because I want that offer to be such a razor blade that it can cut through the short attention span and even turn cold people into customers. Right, So it's a good strategy to validate your idea and bring in some cash, but it could also be misleading. And when you create it, create it in a way that when you write the sales page, you think I'm writing this for people who have never heard from me before, who don't know what I am or what I do. So really important. But it's a good idea to create an offer and launch it to your warm audience first, especially if you have that Facebook pixel and conversion events in place because it gives your pixel data, right? And then when you start your campaign, you're not shooting in the dark. It already has at least a few 
purchases tracked. And so it has a much, much, much better idea of what a buyer looks like. So Facebook algorithm is good, even if it has just a few data points, it's significantly better than it doesn't have any data points. So you give yourself an edge for sure. If I do make a mini offer, is a starter kit appropriate that covers some of all your transformation or is it better to limit it to the first few phases? My starter kit idea is a peace recovery and recalibration kit for burnt out coaches and course creators, entrepreneurs that has quick wins in a few areas so they can feel like they're getting a grip about to stabilize and recalibrate to move forward. I like this. Um, I would very strategically position it as a momentum solution um, to say, you know, you get quick wins so you can recalibrate and move forward. I think with that, it solves a specific problem, which is you have lost momentum and excitement and you don't know how to get back on track. So that is a very specific problem and a very specific solution for that. To me, that sounds like a good mini offer idea. So the scope is more determined by do I have a small but painful problem worth solving? And that's how you would want to think about it. So don't think about it as in I'm giving X chunk of my thing, but more think in the beginning of the transformation I offer in my other offer, what problems, what specific small but painful problems do they have? And how can I provide a full solution, full, deep, well thought out, templatized solution for that specific problem? But it sounds like you have that. Current focus is building your list. My goal is to grow and nurture a list, then make and use offers, including workshop, workshop series, VIP work, etc., to develop this model. Course one, course two, access to course evergreen Q&A, membership to con for continued momentum. That sounds good. Assumptions, limitation, conflict. I would love to investor, not tire Kickstarters to join my list and offer free content through weekly content on social. Don't want, I, I'm always so hesitant when, you know, people say, oh, I don't want to do a strategic freebie because there's only freebie seekers. That's a narrative that people who sell you how to do low ticket offers use to get you to buy because they, they know that you're frustrated that it just takes a very long time to nurture somebody from a lead magnet to a buyer. They use that frustration to, in my opinion, a little bit oversell a self-liquidating offer. Don't get me wrong. A huge portion of my success is based on self-liquidating offers. But that doesn't mean that we have that we should dismiss people who came into our world through a freebie because they just at an earlier stage in a buying cycle and it's our job to nurture them towards that point of purchase, right? And I, I don't think we do ourselves a service if we think of people in a certain way because it's not that a person is a Kickstarter or an investor, it's like, it's where are they on the spectrum? And if you cultivate meaningful conversations with them and you're capable of moving people towards that place of investment, that is, I think, a very empowering thought. And it served me personally really, really well and, and, and added a lot of bottom line profitability over time to my business because there are only so many low hanging fruits and everybody's competing for them, right? Because nobody wants to put in the effort to get people, help people, provide value for people to a point where they are in the place that they want to take the next step with you. Um, I limited on time and funds for ads. Yeah, so then the freebie strategy is potentially even better than a self-liquidating offer strategy. Freebie and pre-selling workshops and then supplement that freebie with self-liquidating offer could be the much better strategy for you. Um, but I do have a transformation map. I would supplement potentially with one-to-one -one sessions. Even using ads, not sure about wanting to do freebies. I believe freebies are a really, really great way. It's just difficult to also nail your first self-liquidating offer right away. And if you think per test run of a self-liquidating offer, you need $100. And sometimes you need three to five test runs. And sometimes you need three to five mini offers to really find that winner, right? So it doesn't mean that worst case, you're out $2,500 until you figured it out because, you know, there's things like sales, et cetera, happening along the way typically. But to me, 
starting with the strategic freebie is just a low risk approach because also the more audience you build and nurture and connect with the more insight you gain as into how you need to position yourself liquidating offer so you also with that audience nurture you also develop the solution intelligence you need so i believe uh, that that's really really um good um jonah where can i see it then uh, I have so many communities that I don't know where. <laughs> I'd love to review it, but I, I just need to see it. Do I need a funnel tool like go high level if I now concentrate on, as you said, launching a group in six months and do lead ads into a school community? Uh, you don't need, you don't need a website, no, because you can do the lead generation campaign completely for free. The only thing you would want to decide is do I want to have my community on school? Then that's a paid commitment for $97 or $99 a month. Or if you want to have the free Facebook group, you get away with free. So you don't need a funnel tool right now. Um, only once you have an offer, you need a sales page, but you can do that in Canva and hook it up with a Stripe checkout. No cost needed for that. And in because in the beta, when you launch it for the first time, you don't even need an order bump or one click upsell like at all, because you really just focus on that beta. But you do need to write a sales pitch in a Google Doc so you have the clarity. <laughs> I'm going to try something crazy, go from a free book, a call to sell $97 membership. That can work, actually, I did that. <laughs> but it just got too much with the uh, people who booked the call and they had a lot of no-shows. So it wasn't sustainable for a very long time, but I believe it's an effective method. My thesis is that one time high touch will help on a relationship and reduce churn's fault. Yeah, I believe that works because I know that works. But, you know, you have to, it's, a, it's work. It's a lot of work that works. Oh no. Mentalcortex.com. Now I got it. <coughs> Live with focus, synthesize knowledge, and achieve your goals. That's cool. Great option offer. I would put that as a one click upsell, please. Please, please. I think what you're missing, love, is audience call out. Who is this for, right? Um, we're also missing a mock-up. Please do yourself the favor and show more of the of this in the mock-up. So this is beautiful, but create a mock-up to or video walkthrough to put above the fault. People want to see what they get. Um, You know, and you can say attention, speak to the pain point, speak to your audience, and then live with focus, synthesize knowledge and achieve your goals. Um, in an ideal world, I would love to have this being a transformation statement, you know, so go from procrastination to go from feeling to or stop doing X instead do Y. Um, I would want to. So that the. the the bold promise itself, you you formulate it in a way that it reflects a transformation, which is stop it, X, start doing Y, go from to turn X into Y, um, ditch set instead, right? So so try to make that bold promise a transformation in itself. Try to be really specific, and if this is a tool, then let let people know like um, using. A, a, a dashboard, right? So may, really highlight in the description here what your unique methodology is. And I think instead of view plans, I would say something like get instant access now for $7 or less, right? So we already know that it's very, very affordable. Those will be the changes that I would make to the above the fold section. But it looks great, very professionally made. 
I'm not afraid to work. My goal is to do calls until I get 27 members that should get 20k MRR. What are your conversions from a call to 97? When the person is on the call, I convert like at 80%, right? So really only the people that I even feel like, oh, I don't want to work with them. They would not keep working with me. But when, when somebody is on a call with me, it's almost a done deal. The challenge is that people might book in and then don't come. So you'd want to have a show up incentive, right? So you could give, you could create like a really high value, tangible deliverable. You can even use something from Secret Weapon and let people know when you come to the call, you get this and we work this through and you walk away with this dashboard resource. Um, so they have a very, very, very strong incentives to show up live to the call. And please check out the themed one-to-one -one session planner. I think if you have a themed session, you get significantly more people showing up. So you have that in the offer builders. I just want to theme one-to-one. -one. Where did I have this? Oh my goodness. Um, this one. I'm dropping this. Here, okay, below this pinned one. Please make a themed session and then a tangible deliverable with it. I think then you can increase your show up rate a lot. Thank you. Please, please do. And I would love to see it again. Uh, I'll refresh it. Hold you accountable. Do it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, wonderful. Do we have more questions? Then the last one was already like longer ago. And I really unfortunately have to go lovely people. So I'll be doing this again very soon. Pain point session round number one is coming up. Then we have a challenge coming up as well about that. So please stay tuned. And thank you for helping each other out so much in the community. I really appreciate you. I love what we're building here. I'm so excited and so grateful for, you, for everyone. And I also love school as the platform and the vibe because it allows us to work like this together. So Massive, massive thank you to everyone who's watching this live right now or in the replay later. I actually did a test. I don't have ADHD. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, somebody, there was all, I get like all the different uh, things that I said, but I know I did like a test because I got... Uh, my therapist asked me to do the test uh, and I don't, it seems like. So thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. I wish you a absolutely wonderful day um, and I can't wait to catch you again in the communities. Bye for now.